Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The fancy YouTube algorithms will rank us higher and enable us to keep making great content for you. Thank you for your time, now let's get into the video. Okay coders, in this video we are going to further randomize the instantiation of our objects by adding additional spawn points and instantiating within a random position around those spawn points. So here's a quick look at what we're actually going to be creating. Okay, Coder, so here's what we're actually going to be creating. As you can see, it's much more randomized. We're populating way more balls just all over the place. Um, really sort of stress testing our computer. So I hope you're ready to uh, create some awesome stuff. Now, before we get into any of the actual scripting or level editing, let's look at what we have so far as well. So I'll just press the play button really quickly. Now we've got our camera rotating to look at objects. When I spawn more objects, you can see that we're just targeting random objects moving around. So we've got a pretty cool scene going so far, but it could be a lot cooler. So now that we know our starting point, let's get to work. For this video, we are going to be creating a new script and we're gonna, we are going to update our level a little bit. So to make things easier, let's start with the level updates. Basically, all we have to do with our level is add a few more spawn points. So if I click on my spawner here, I can see that it's basically at 0, 070. 0. And what I want to do is have sp five spawn points in total, one in the center and uh, four out on closer to the edges here. So let's go ahead and just duplicate this. And let's try to find a pretty good position Let's say negative eight. Oops. It's like negative eight was a little much. It looks like negative eight is going to push it way out. So let's actually move it closer in. So we'll go negative 3.5. And let's duplicate again. And this one's going to be 3.5. So for looking here, should drop on this side we're going to duplicate two more this one's going to be well I can just select both and we'll just set these whoops set the X to zero now on the first one again we're going to do 3.5 and on the second one we're going to do a negative 3.5 okay so that's going to get those all in place if I select them well it's not actually showing the different uh, spawn points, but basically we, we know where they're going to be in the level. What I actually want to do now is add a tag for these spawn points. So let's go up to our tags, add a tag, and we're just going to add the tag spawn point. Save that. Now if we select all of our spawners here and just add the tag, cool. Okay, so that should do it for our level updates. The next thing we're actually going to do is create a new script. So if we go down to our scripts folder, we're going to right click create C sharp script and we're actually going to name this one super random spawner. All right, now let's open this guy up. Now that we've got this open, I'm actually going to open up uh, the random spawner and I'm just going to copy what we currently have and close it back out. I can just very easily paste it in here. Okay, so now that we have copied in our other code, the first thing that we're actually going to need to do is change this spawn position, uh, transform into a game object array, and we're just going to call this spawn points now. And I'll show you why I changed it to a game object array in just a second. The next thing we're actually going to need is a public float radius, and this is going to help us um, get a more randomized position based on our spawn points. And you'll see that in a little bit as well. And finally, we're going to need, we can just copy this, int random, we'll just call this int random2. Okay, we are also going to need a void start function for this. All right, and inside of this start function, we are actually going to set up our spawn points array, and we're going to do game object dot find game objects with tag and we're going to say spawn points 
Very cool. Okay, we can leave our update function the way it is. That should be fine, but we're gonna add two more just sort of helper functions here. And the first one's going to return an int and it's gonna be git random. And as a parameter, we're gonna say int count. And this is just, again, it's just a helper function that's gonna sort of help us to organize our code a little bit. And inside of this, we're just going to return a random dot range from zero to count. Okay, the next helper function we need is going to be a vector three, get random vector, and it's going to take in a vector three vec, and we're just again going to return, and we're going to return random dot inside unit sphere times our radius plus the vec that we received uh, as a parameter. Okay, now we've got a little bit that we need to do to our spawn random function. As you can see, our spawn position no longer exists, so it's throwing an error right now, but we're gonna fix that pretty quickly. The first thing that we actually need to do is change up our random int, and this time we're just gonna say get random, and as a count, we're gonna pass spawnees.length Okay, we're going to do random int2 is equal to get random, and that's going to be spawn points dot length. So now we've got two different random numbers here. Actually, I do want to do one more thing. Since we're doing these randoms like this, I want to do a uh, vector3 random vec. So that way we can do the same thing with our position, just getting it stored here. So we're actually going to go ahead and say random vec is equal to get random vector. And for this, we're going to pass our spawn points and we're going to pass the random int to, oops, random int to dot transform dot position. So that should be all the setup we need to get our instantiation call occurring. So we've got our spawn, our spawnies being instantiated. So we're instantiating a random object from our spawnies. For our position, we're actually going to use our random vec here. Okay, now for our rotation, and this is gonna be a little bit longer of a call because we're not doing uh, randomized rotations yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass spawn points, uh, random int two, dot transform dot rotation okay so that's a little bit of a longer call there but that should be fine so that's all we have to do right now let's save that let's go back to our scene now if we click on our main camera here we just want to remove the random spawner so I'm, act I'm actually gonna go ahead and actually remove it and we're going to add in our super whoop super random spawner and the right now both of these spawnies well we actually need to we, we actually need to add in our spawnies again so if we go to our prefabs and just select oh hate it when it does that let's lock it if we select our prefabs we can just add those very quickly to our spawnies array now we can unlock our inspector here and our spawn points should populate dynamically. So let's go ahead and see what this does. So it looks like we do have a error right off the bat. Tags. What is this being? Spawn point. Oh, well, that was a dumb mistake. There we go. Make sure you use the right tag here. Now let's try it again. Just gonna click on the main camera, make sure we've got our spawn points filled out. Looks like it does. So let's go ahead and, yes, yes. That is much more glorious. <laughs> That's awesome. And as you can see, when they're instantiating, even if they're instantiating at pretty much the same um, spawn point, they're actually stacked a little bit off from one another because of that in random dot inside unit sphere. So this is honestly, I think this is like one of the, a really cool demonstration that's created in unity. So, and just using simple scripts too, like 
Let's see how many we can add. I bet my uh, frame rate's going to just plummet here. <laughs> Look at all these spheres being added. This is amazing. Okay, so let's stop that. That's really cool. Okay, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Let us know if you have any requests that you would like to see made, and we will try to accommodate those requests. We are going to continue developing this series going forward, with our next video getting into adding your own wind zones to a project. That is going to do it for this tutorial. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.